In this video, we're going to talk about the Tools tab for Infinite Retouch. If you don't have Infinite Retouch and you would like to download it for free as a trial, please check out infinite-tools.com where you can see and download it as well. So tools themselves here have a lot of different functionality to them. Let's talk about uh, using the buttons here. We have hue, saturation, and color for color uh, correction. So if I click on hue, saturation, and color, it places the blank layer set to hue, this one set to saturation, and this one set to color. One thing you'll notice is that it actually comes within the color correction folder, so it's easy to organize. You don't have to physically create folders anymore. Um, also, it has a lock next to it. The reason for that is if you, for example, let's say that I take the color layer here, use a regular brush tool, um, and then brush across, and then if I accidentally try and move it, it doesn't move it because the layer is locked. So this is really good as a, as a you know, setting to have when you're retouching because you don't actually move your layers. If you would like to modify them, you can click on them, right click on them, I should say, and then you can change the blend mode if you want to do that um, and go to edit here and rename them. So technically, you don't have to keep it as a hue layer. You can do whatever you want. Maybe if it's a healing layer, you could do that too, if, if you so choose to. And you know maybe you run out of buttons, you, you're like, I don't use a hue layer but I would like to call it like healing or, or something like that. You could totally do that. Um, and obviously the edit area gives you option for group name. Instead of color correction, you can have it in its own group if you'd like. Um, and the layer name here, so it says hue, it turns into hue. Okay. Um, again, this auto run action auto select tool has their own respective video. So please check that out independently. Um, aside from this area here, we're going to talk about stamp current and below. This is super, super handy. If you're not familiar, what it does is that uh, it creates a almost like a little snapshot of all the work that you've done. So let's say that you know you have uh, let's just run this create button here really quick. It creates this whole like you know retouching setup. Maybe you know you've done some clone work or something. Let's let's emulate this here really quickly. Let's say that you know you've maybe removed this piece of hair here like that, and you're like, well, you know now it's time to liquefy. But the problem is you know after you've done a ton of work in different places you really can't liquefy unless it's a solid layer. And so let's go back to the tools area here. And maybe I'm trying to do it after dodge and burn. I can click on stamp current and below. And what it does is aside from, you know, anything else being visible, this layer now contains all the adjustments, that, adjustments and work that I've done into one respective layer. Why is that handy? Well, it's handy when you have something where let's say that you know you're trying to liquefy maybe like let's say you go to filter liquefy or maybe you're trying to sharpen or whatever uh it for our my friend arbany is watching this uh i'm so sorry arbany but <laughs> let's say you liquefy something like that and you have to do it on this layer so that's kind of why we have stamp current below also for other reasons and if you know you know i mean it's not a tutorial video on all the different ways to use it but it does give you an example of what you could do. And liquify for me is what I use this primarily for. It, it's very handy. Another thing that is, is really cool is update smart object. Um, and what that means is, let's say that you would like to use stamp current and below, but instead of having it as a pixel layer as we did, we can also have it as a smart object um, automatically. Here's how this works. I can hold Option or Alt and then click on it and then it comes up as a smart object automatically. And this is uh, handy because if I go ahead and liquefy again like this and just, you know, do whatever, not that you would do that, but let's say you did that. Um, this is handy because let's say that you did this, right? And you're like, oh no, I forgot to take all the hair out. So what I would do then is you'd be screwed because you have to turn it off, delete it, edit some more, do another smart, uh, do another um, uh, stamp current and below layer and liquefy again. But instead, what we could do is let's just say you do, I turn that off, come back to my normal layer and do some more work I'm like, okay, I'm going to clone that nose out for whatever <laughs> reason. <laughs> and then you want to update this smart object. What you can do is just click on update smart object and then it updates it. <laughs> with your clone. So this makes this makes liquefying almost non-destructive in a way when you think about it. Because even if you liquefy and you forgot to do something, 
You just need to turn it off, go back to your retouching, come back, and then update the smart object. That's very, very cool, I think, my personal opinion. So that's kind of a little bit about that. If that's not of your concern, don't even worry about it. Uh, we have other options as well. So if you right click on a uh, stamp current and below, right click, uh, what you're going to create or what you're going to see is you can also um, have it as a smart object by default. So you don't have to hit option or alt. So what happens is when I click on it and then when I run it, it uh, creates a smart object automatically. Another function we have here is auto create group. So if you don't want it to be in its own group all the time, you can just say click and then it just pops up into its own separate layer. So that way it's easy for each other. You can rename it as an edit function, of course. So you don't have to say stamp, you can just say stamp if that's a better or phrasing for you. And that's it. Once that's done, um, the rest is pretty straightforward. Uh, we will have a separate se section on sharpening and smart sharpen as well as grain. So please check that out as well as other videos regarding this area. Um, but I hope that goes over it. Again, you can use these tools as needed or you can rename them and make them whatever you want because they're in, in effect buttons that you could use for pretty much anything that you're looking for. They're modifiable. You can add them any point to your workspace, um, which is how we use them. We use these tools in addition to creating the initial workflow. So it allows us to easily just add stamp objects in the middle or you know, color layers in the middle or whatever it is that you're trying to look for. So tools, we kept it there as a very generic name for that purpose. So I hope that helped. And again, if you're looking to save all this information or all these adjustments that you've done, if you already have a license installed, simply go to your gear icon and say backup. And then that's that. And if you want to import from someone else, you could do that as well. So hope that helped. And I'll see you in the next video.